Hello, this is Matt on the Moon Lambo channel. Ripple moves roughly, I'll round the number for you, 356 million XRP. And uh, as Bitcoin whales transfer $134 a million dollars in Bitcoin, that's, that's the title here. And uh, I'll tell you what, I think it's reasonable, more than reasonable, to assume that this is specifically... Uh, for, for on-demand liquidity, utilizing XRP as a bridge currency. And I will make my case on that. I think it's very reasonable to speculate that is the case. Um, I also want to cover this story uh, from Daily Hodl. Ripple-backed MoneyGram announces new partnership with Suez Canal Bank. But before we go any further, if you would please delicately tap that like button and if you are a fan of Ripple and uh, XRP and like the idea of uh, XRP getting sent to those exchange partners utilizing on-demand liquidity, offering that, uh, you know, because they're the liquidity pools. If you're a fan of all that jazz, we should be friends. Go ahead and subscribe to the Moon Lambo channel so that we can make that a reality. Let's do it. Come on. Dream it, you dreamer. All right, let's go ahead and jump in now. Crypto traders are trying to determine why Ripple is moving 356 million XRP worth $78.4 million. The San Francisco startup, which owns more than half of all XRP in existence, sent the XRP to unknown wallets in two separate transactions. The first transfer happened on Wednesday, with the second coming through two days later. Now, I'm not that good with numbers, but that would make it Friday. And here's the tweet on the screen right here. Uh, from Whale Alert. In response to the above tweet from Whale Alert, crypto enthusiasts connected the transfer to the Luxembourg-based crypto exchange Bitstamp. Now, when I read that, I thought, what? I thought that Bitstamp was headquartered in London. And I, I, I mentioned that in a fairly recent video, and so I'd like to correct the record. Um, I'm right that they do have a location in London, but I was mistaken in believing that was their headquarters, so I went to their website. I guess my, I Googled, you know, where's Bitcoin headquarter, uh, Bitcoin, where's Bitstamp headquartered, and what popped up was uh, was London, but um, and I didn't dig any further. I just took it as uh, gospel there, essentially, and not quite the case. So this time, since I read that, I dug in further. I was like, oh, okay, so here's the headquarters right here. It's in Luxembourg. They have an exchange here um, office in a Bitstamp LTD in London. So I was right that they have a location there at least. And uh, there's an office also in the United States, New York, New York. So nice to say it twice. Now, uh, the, the reason that I brought that up in the past week, uh, and I think it was within the last week, I want to say. You know, I, you read enough stuff about Ripple and XRP, it all starts to blur together. Let me, let me, I spend too much time on this here. But I will tell you, the reason that I was looking it up is because Ripple very recently announced a new um, on-demand liquidity corridor, which will be connecting the euro to the United States dollar. And they didn't specifically state who the partners involved were. And so I went through where all the other exchanges are located. And so uh, there's only one that's uh, going to be dealing with the euro, and that's, uh, that's Bitstamp. And that's why when I Googled where's Bitstamp located when London popped up, I was like, oh, perfect. This makes a ton of sense here. Right, uh, and so that—that's as far as I can tell, absolutely accurate. That you know, but uh, anyway, let me jump back to this piece now that I've clarified that. There, um, traders speculate that uh, the, the movement was an over-the-counter sale to the exchange, and question whether the ex the uh, the transfer is connected to Bitstamp's plans to join Ripple's XRP-based liquidity solution. Now, the reason that I think it's absolutely perfectly reasonable to speculate that this is explicitly for on-demand liquidity, well, first of all, we already know that uh, Bitstamp is an on-demand liquidity partner. We also know that Ripple has practically stopped sales of XRP except for with those entities that, as Brad Garlinghouse put it, are uh, strategic partners having to do with on-demand liquidity. So if any XRP is being sold and it's not for those purposes, I'd be a little surprised because that's, at least for the time being, their game plan. And if you look at the Q Q4 Markets report, which just came out several days ago, uh, they said as much there too. The, you know, the sales were dramatically down, which is perfectly fine. You know, it's, it's by design. You know, they don't want to flood the market. And that, you know, Ripple has nothing to do with the reason that XRP is the price that it is. It's just, you know, tethered to the price action of Bitcoin. It, it's looking to look no further than that. That's the truth. And so, uh, you know, if it weren't that, please tell me what the hell it is. You know, I think that, it, it, to me, w even if we don't have technically a, like a written document from, from an employee at Ripple stating that's it, 
please tell me if something else is even almost reasonable to assume. So, um, while technically we don't know, that's why I do call it speculation, it's probably, there's a high chance that that's what's going on here. And so, again, just further proof that uh, it, it Ripple's doing everything they can to make sure that their exchange partners that serve as liquidity pools uh, for, for on-demand liquidity, utilizing XRPs and bridge currency, they're making sure that uh, they're, they're properly positioned so that as adoption continues, there won't be any blips, you know. You don't want to don't want to tap out the order books, for example. So I'm just saying, I think that they're they're doing everything right there, and um, and you can see there's a headline here. I probably don't really need to read through this, but um, I just pulled it up. Uh, this is from January 14th. Who's using Ripple's XRP payments product? These 24 fintech companies say they're on board, and of course, uh, Bitstamp was under. I believe that's yeah. It's the reason that I had this pulled up here in the first place. All right, uh, next, Ripple-backed MoneyGram announces new partnership with Suez Canal Bank. Uh, MoneyGram has announced a strategic partner with Suez Canal Bank, allowing customers from around the world to send money directly to account holders in Egypt. The leader in cross-border payments and money transfers says the agreement grants the company access to the bank's wide network of correspondent banks throughout the world. Uh, Suez Canal Bank will now be able to connect to the MoneyGram platform, allowing customers to leverage digital features. Now, says Grantline's MoneyGram's chief revenue officer, quote, as we ex execute our digital transformation uh, to lead the industry in the digital movement of money, a key strategic priority is expanding account deposit services in major international markets. I know, as if they didn't already have enough uh, just corridors open in general, they're also making sure they're partnering with appropriate banks, uh, partnered with Ripple, obviously. And so it's, this is not just some sort of tagline for them. When, he, when this guy states, as we execute our digital transformation, that's something they're actually doing, and they fully recognize that they need to the, be at the forefront of the technological revolution, or else uh, they will just continually be further left behind. So... All good things and absolutely moving in the right direction here. Now, um, as far as uh, the implications of XRP, there are none here in the story. I'll, so this is a non-hype channel. I'm just going to be upfront with you. But when I read stuff like this, I still personally believe that it's it's still noteworthy and it is important. We need MoneyGram to do well in general. And it's it's not necessarily the case that XRP will save the company if they're not doing other stuff well and keeping up in all other regards as well, which includes partnerships. And so absolutely, on-demand liquidity utilizing XRP, of course, that's a huge piece of this. And there's a reason that MoneyGram's very excited about that. But uh, it's also not something that's going to you know, save them anytime soon, even though they're they're loving the experience. Don't get me wrong. They're super hyped about it. And it could not be more clear on that. They think that Ripple, they just wish Ripple could develop faster. You know, I've, I've, there was a story on that, in fact, which I was happy to cover. But uh, it, it's just, it's a matter of fact that XRP is illiquid as it pertains to the, the, what would actually be required to make that a reality in terms of just replacing Nostra Vostra accounts flat out in, in 2020. But they're building this, so it's okay. It's not like that's some huge diss on them. They're doing absolutely fantastic, but all good things in time here. All right, uh, next uh, here is a story from Cointelegraph. Bitcoin needs more PR from people like Peter Schiff, says Binance CEO. Bitcoin skeptic and gold bug Peter Schiff is unwittingly advertising the cryptocurrency's virtues over other investments, says the CEO of exchange Binance. In a tweet on January 25th, CZ argued, uh, that's the CEO, argued Schiff was failing in, uh, in suing distru sowing distrust in uh, Bitcoin among social media followers and beyond. I think Peter is doing great to promote Bitcoin. He probably does not realize that, given his illogical reasoning, uh, most people will do exactly the opposite of what he says. That's, that's directly from CZ. And then he said, we need more of these types of negative voices. Ah, uh, Peter Sch I like Peter Schiff. I know he's wrong about crypto, but he just comes off as super likable. And I like a lot of other stuff that he has to say just in general. So I say more power to him. Peter Schiff, you just keep selling those yellow rocks. It's, it's totally fine by me. Uh, the Euro-Pacific Capital Hedge Fund Manager was already somewhat notorious for his posts attacking Bitcoin, which claim gold to be superior. Yes, Yellow Rocks. Last week, however, Schiff was already undermining the his credentials after blaming wallet provider Blockchain for, quote, losing his Bitcoin holdings worth 0.21 Bitcoin. That's $1,750 um, he received in the form of donations in 2019. 
In the event, uh, Schiff had simply confused his PIN with his password. Nonetheless, he continued to allege that Bitcoin investors were the true ignorant party for choosing cryptocurrency over the precious metal. Bitcoin bugs are saying, I'm not qualified to give advice about Bitcoin because I don't know the difference between a PIN and a password. I know the difference now, and my advice hasn't changed. The tweet which has which inspired CZ read. And Schiff added, quote, But those Bitcoin bugs still don't know the difference between Bitcoin and gold. And I like that. You know, I, I think that uh, Peter Schiff, he, he, for whatever reason, the tagline picked up, and he's just known as a gold bug. That's just the, the people just call him, and he's definitely noticed, and he's questioned in the past, why do people keep calling me a gold bug? And so I like that he's thrown it back at the Bitcoiners out there, calling them Bitcoin bugs. Ah, so there we go. Uh, you're you're just uh, you're great, Peter Schiff, but you are absolutely wrong about cryptocurrency. <laughs> Sorry, but then again, I it's, you know why, and, and I don't entirely blame you. Nobody's articulated the reason that it makes sense for cryptocurrency to have an open market value and and the stain uh, stain power. And it comes down to utility. It's just as simple as I can put it. And this is my own original thought that I've been stating on this channel for a long time. Uh, and I, I haven't really heard anyone else quite articulate it like this, but it's just a matter of fact that businesses have certain models that they're using today. You can think about uh, on-demand liquidity partners and uh, like Flash FX, for example. And they cannot conduct those business models without this. So there is actual genuine value. And so if you're looking for what is the purpose, what is the reason that uh, a, a cryptocurrency should have an open market value and, sh and it should have staying power, it's because businesses couldn't conduct business the way they are today without them existing. And people who speculate, like me in the market, know that. We know that the businesses need the XRP and we buy it because they're going to need it. And we also know that other people are going to speculate. We, we suspect that, uh, it's not even a suspect, like a suspicion type of thing. We know that people are, matter of factly, on top of investment, just utilizing XRP as a store of value. And if you want to make the argument that it's not a store of value, if it's volatile, then we're just having an issue uh, with the definition of what a store of value is, and that's all that is. But people are doing that. And so there we go. And that's not going away. My friend, I'm sorry. That's just, it's not going away. But I, I feel like it's not entirely your fault. Like maybe you could have done more research, but I feel like most coins, even if you did spend the time, you're going to find the same thing I found in 2017 when I entered the world of crypto, which is that almost none of them do anything. There's over 5,000 cryptocurrencies out there that freaking do nothing. So in that sense, I don't blame you. But if, if you were to understand the, the utilization of XRP and, and, and the implications of that as far as the way money moves around the planet... I just, I don't know, unless you want to be disingenuous, I don't know how at that point you couldn't actually acknowledge that, uh, yes, there's genuine value there, which is different than price, and as a result of that value, there should be an open market price that would, will be around in perpetuity, you know, as, for as long as the internet exists. Uh, that's that's my firm belief right there, and so nobody has articulated that to him. I would love to tell him, but he gets too much attention. I've tweeted at him a couple times, and not surprisingly, I'm sure he didn't even see it. But, uh, you know, he's, like he's going to respond to a guy that has a stupid name like Moon Lambo, you know, so whatever. But, uh, but that's, that's, that's the way I look at it. And it's, that's why I, I could not be more confident that the crypto asset class is here to stay, even if I were wrong about XRP, which I don't think I am. But that's it for this video. I am not a financial advisor. Do not buy or sell anything because of anything that I say or write. That would be a very, very, very bad idea. Until next time, to the Moon Lambo.